Hey Team Yellow, today we're here to explain the importance of playing uh, your preferred pickleball or tennis uh, sport in a all court or tennis specific shoe versus a running shoe. Now we've seen quite a lot of pickleball and tennis players in the area at some of the public parks and clubs we play at uh, playing pickleball or tennis in a running shoe and um, that really can make you prone to injury, especially on the ankle, as running shoes aren't meant to provide the most support, especially moving, moving laterally as, um, as frequently as that happens on a tennis or a pickleball court. So um, just wanted to explain a few differences and really the uh, composition of how a tennis or an all court uh, specific shoe is made versus a running shoe. And again, why it is important to play uh, tennis or pickleball in an all court or tennis specific shoe. So the first thing when looking at both of these shoes in front of us here is just the overall weight. Both of these are size 10 and a half men's and the tennis shoe here in my left hand, the Adidas Barricade, comes in at about three whole ounces heavier than this running shoe here. And the biggest difference between the weight is gonna be really the material that tennis, most tennis shoes are made out of, which is a thermoplastic polyurethane, which is an extremely durable uh, material that's really just gonna extend the shelf life of your shoe uh, due to all the constant dragging back and forth across a rough tennis court surface. Um, now, if you can kind of see, there's really not a whole lot of bending and twisting on a tennis shoe. Again, that just um, kind of reinforces the um, durability on a tennis shoe versus a running shoe is typically made out of like a lightweight mesh material, much more breathable than a tennis shoe. Um, but again, also isn't nearly as durable, especially due to the constant dragging back and forth on a rough tennis court surface. Um, next thing I want to take note of is the mid, uh, the midsole cushioning. Now on running shoes, you really kind of feel like you're kind of elevated out of the shoe. I actually put both of these shoes on side by side and um, almost kind of felt like I was a good half inch to an inch off the ground uh, when I tried balancing and standing up straight. And again, I felt like my tennis shoe was kind of hovering a good half inch above the ground. Um, now, the Adidas Barricade is a little bit of an outlier as it does come equipped with the Adidas Bounce technology, which just gives you a little bit more spring in your step, but that's why I brought a Wilson Rush Pro Ace all-court tennis shoe here, and you can kind of see the similarities between the midsole cushionings a little bit more in line. It's not as exaggerated as it is on the, the Adidas Barricade here in front of me, um, but really the biggest difference is going to be the lateral um, ankle support that you have on a tennis shoe, um, as that really isn't what a running shoe is designed for. Most running shoes are meant for all terrain. You could be running through trails, different inclines, wet, dry surfaces. Um, whereas tennis, the good thing about tennis and pickleball courts is it's a nice, dry, flat surface. So um, you don't really have to worry about different types of climates that you're going to be playing with. Um, or maybe if you're playing on different surface types, whether it may be clay, grass, or uh, carpet indoors. So um, last thing to take note of, is gonna be the outsole tread. Now, if you look on the bottom of this Adidas Barricade here, it has a nice uh, herringbone pattern, really designed to have a specific tread to give you the best traction possible on a hard tennis court surface versus here on the bottom of the running shoe, it really kind of has an all-terrain, as, as the term I kind of coined uh, for the bottom of running shoes. It's really not meant to be too squeaky. Uh, it's kind of the biggest test that I saw out there on the court today, especially when I was, um, really trying to position my feet in the right place for a ground stroke or even split, steading, split stepping before a volley. Um, hearing those squeaks on the courts no, uh, is really a good way to let you know that your feet are, are in the right place and they're doing what they need to. And when I was trying to do that with running shoes, you couldn't hear anything at all. All you heard was crickets. So um, that's definitely the biggest difference between the outsole tread on a tennis shoe versus uh, a running shoe, um, as well as um, the toe drop off. Now the toe drop off on running shoes, you can really kind of just see um, it's gonna be much more exaggerated and much more vertical on a running shoe rather than a tennis shoe. Uh, however, I did actually really find to like that on my serve as I do have a platform serve. I don't drag my back foot up at all. But if you are a toe dragger, I actually kind of just did a, a quick test of that. Um, and you're absolutely just gonna tear right through your, tennis, uh, your, your running shoe, sorry. Um, just again, Running shoes aren't meant to be dragged back and forth on, on a tennis court like that. And that's really where that TPU uh, material comes into play as well as a toe drag guard on tennis shoes or all court specific shoes. Um, it's just, again, it's just gonna extend the shelf life and they have a lot more um, probability of wear and tear on, on your shoes. Again, because of that toe drag guard and the, the traction on the bottom of the shoe. So let us know what your guys' take is on uh, maybe if you have a different angle about why you can play in tennis shoes. Uh, we'd love to interact with you guys. We'd love to hear your feedback. We do offer both tennis and all-court specific shoes, as well as running shoes at tennis-point.com. So 
uh, feel free to uh, give our website a visit, see if there's anything out there that you're looking for. And again, we'd love to interact with you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Advantage you.